For the third year and counting, Richard Skipper has been celebrating the artists you love. Richard Skipper is all about celebrating life, art, and his guest body of work. Please join us while he showcases these diverse and talented individuals. Here's Richard Skipper. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience. Thank you. We got here. I've got five incredible people waiting in the wings who, I mean, the good news <clears throat> is while I was trying to get logged on, there was a big glitch here at home, but while I was waiting to get logged on, they were getting to know each other. They were chatting away a storm in the wings. Uh, two of our guests were actually on camera and they were having a conversation. It kept going on. It was just an incredible afternoon uh, for all of them. Uh, in the meantime, I'm here having a mental breakdown. You see, my husband has two high-powered computers in the next room. And normally when he is not here, uh, the computers are turned off. And it was taking so much energy, I could not get on this afternoon. So that's what the big glitch was. I finally called him and I said, are your computers left on? And he went, oh my God, I forgot to turn them off this morning. So I had to go in. T turn his computers off, get ready so that I could get here. So I'm going to take a deep breath. I am thankful uh, on this Thanksgiving weekend that you're all here, that you were all patient, that you all waited to get here. Today is National Black Friday Day. Uh, this is a day where shoppers are praying and hoping that everyone is going to be flocking to their stores. It is also actually National Buy Nothing Day. Uh, the store owners are now shutting me off. They do not want to hear that. And it's National Blase Day. But I want to thank Sherry Callahan, Natasha Lombardi, Robbie, uh, all of you who are waiting in the wings. I asked Natasha to pick a number, one through five, to bring on our first guest. And I'm thrilled at the numbers that she pulled because um, I have a confession to make. I'm in love. I am in love. Well, I'm in love with all of our guests. But this guest uh, I fell in love with during uh, the pandemic uh, because of her daily uh, uh, shows that she put on. Her face just lit up because she knows what I'm talking about. Uh, and this summer, finally in Provincetown, I got a chance to see her face to face, see the magic that this woman creates on stage. And I am thrilled to say that she's going to be performing in my own backyard, practically, Connecticut in April, April 27th, I think is the date. And it's around the time of my husband's birthday. And we are going to be there uh, because I cannot get enough of her. Her CD is I'm Still Here. And uh, and luckily for me, she's still here because she was patient, waiting for me to come on. <laughs> she's on. It's 10. It, now it's 10. What time it is? Uh, in 10, 15. 10, 15. Thank you for your patience, Debbie. I That's am so right. thrilled that you are here. Uh, and I have to begin by saying, who or what are you celebrating today? Because I know that you're, you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, or do you? No, no. No. So what are you celebrating today? Uh, it was my daughter's Christmas fair at her first ever school. She's just started going to school. And so we had a Christmas fair. She met Father Christmas in his grotto. And um, I won a bottle of wine at a tombola for two pounds <laughs> for a big bottle of wine. Good for you. Now, I'm That's planning, nice. Well, I am planning a trip to London uh, to see Imelda Staunton in Hello, Dolly, when that uh. opens. And uh, I don't know how you're going to make this happen, but you're going to be performing somewhere when I get there. Because well, I, I would like there. that. Would be nice. Sure. <laughs> I have to be there. Maybe I'll leave it open for you. Wouldn't that be nice? Great. So, uh, so what's happening in the world of you and Scott Stander, your incredible manager? I'll give a shout out to him. Um. Well, we're planning some shows for next year in something in London in Feb, and then some shows um in america in march and april there's a few different ones i'm very excited to be singing with my first ever symphony orchestra oh that's incredible 
60 pieces. They should be excited to be performing with you. Because oh, you, you are a symphony orchestra. You schmooze at you. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, I gave up counting after, I guess, the 10th standing ovation during your concert <laughs> in Provincetown. I mean, you know, it reminds me, you know, I, I came to New York. Uh, I'm a Methodist boy from South Carolina. And when I came to New York for a brief moment, a, a very brief moment, but I converted to Catholicism. So oh. that first year that I went back home to South Carolina, I needed to go to mass, uh, midnight mass. And I went with my sister and my sister said, is this a workout? It was like the Catholic <laughs> workout. You stand up, you sit down, you kneel, you stand up, you sit down, you kneel. Well, going to your concert is like a workout because you're standing up. And I mean, <laughs> the audience in, in mass are just going crazy over you. Uh, I mean, you are a phenom and I am thrilled that you said yes to being here today. So yeah. I cannot wait to see you in February. Uh, I, I'm sorry, April. Uh, Unless you want to come to London in February. I as well. to come yeah, earlier. <laughs> uh, February is my birthday, but uh, I, we, we've got a few f people waiting in the wings and we're going to get them on as soon as we can uh, because they have been waiting patiently to get here. But I've got five mystery questions. And you get to pull a number one through five, and it will be your question. And I don't even know what they are. Three, please. Okay. And the question is, if you could compete in the Olympics, which sport would you choose? Uh, shot put. <laughs> and why? I'm not very athletic and I'm quite strong. And it's what I did when I was at secondary school when we had to do an athletics thing and I came second. So not too bad. I have no balance whatsoever. So I couldn't do any sort of cycling. It's, no, apparently it's a premature baby thing because I was born at six months and um, I was born at 27 weeks. Wow. And apparently all premature babies have really bad balance apparently someone told me this on a train and his son was premature and we were chatting well what an but, amazing um, we'll see what you learn on richard skipper celebrates i never knew yeah, that there you go <laughs> so you get to pull up our next guest so one through four. Ooh, two please and i am so thrilled that she is here today because uh well uh she is uh, has been on the show a few times uh she is uh a nurse uh, so if you lose your balance during the show, maybe she'll give us some pointers. Uh, she I'm is here, sofa, and she knows who I'm about to pull on. That's my dear friend, Ellen Matzer. Hello, Ellen. How are you? Hi, Ellen. Hi, Richard. Hi, Debbie. So great to be here. Ellen, uh, you're meeting for the first time, I'm assuming, today. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Debbie before today? I haven't, no, I'm but I'm, I'm very familiar with her right now after all that chatting. <laughs> You are going to go to YouTube after this, and it's going to be like falling down the rabbit hole, because once you see these videos, you're never going to want to leave. I am. I because am. Because she year. is phenomenal. She channels voices. Judy Garland lives through her. I was, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get your recording on with you and John Mayer. When That's did you record right. this? Uh, last Christmas. Wonderful. Last Christmas. Uh Sang a song with John Mayer. Uh, uh, Meyer. 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 He, yes. He prefers Meyer. That's how, because yeah. he corrected yes. me. The first time I did a video as Judy talking about John as her, he commented, which made me go, oh my God. And then he said, you've said my name wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, well I've, I've made that mistake. I just made it myself. And we were all yeah. friends. Um, so, Ellen, who or what are you celebrating today? Well, let's see. I am celebrating the fact that I ran 2.5 miles. Well done. After my, you know, this is my longest after my hip replacement. So I had oh, a hip replacement in March and been having a little trouble getting back on my feet. So, uh, yep. Did wow. It. Did it, doing it. So that's why I want. I wanted the, uh, the Olympic athlete question. <laughs> Now, do do you, um, I mean, did you have a nice big Thanksgiving? How do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Actually, uh, this year I did absolutely nothing. I ran 
again, ran. Well, and, that's... Then, uh, and then I had to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make me want to take a nap right there. Was, laundry, running laundry, nap. <laughs> so I'm going to ask play. you, uh, you know, the same question that I asked Debbie. If you could uh, compete in the Olympics, which sport would you choose? I would be a marathon runner. Well, I guess so. Okay. Um, have you thought about running the marathon? I've I've run not the marathon. I have run a whole bunch of five Ks, and that's about my speed. Although, and I did last year. Last year on my birthday, uh, we ran myself, my husband, and a good friend of mine ran a five K at night. That was the first time I've ever run at night. We had to wear headlamps. Wow! And we were in a park completely blinded except for headlamps it was the most fascinating thing and scary it was freezing and then you finish and all these people all these volunteers come out and they're serving soup and and giving you water and you're getting your medal and then i found out that i came in first in my age group and so i, I got a plaque i was i was so excited that was for my on my birthday which is tomorrow and um, that was happy that birthday. Was well, that's right. It is your birthday. Yes. Now, I reached out to you to wish you a happy birthday. I asked how you were celebrating. Yes. And then I asked if you would come on the show. So happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So how, are you gonna, how are you celebrating? Are you going to be running tomorrow? <laughs> I will actually. I, I will, I'm sorry. My birthday is Sunday. I okay. will be running tomorrow. And I will be just seeing my, my mother and uh, my in-laws on Sunday for a you know, a meal and, and just hanging out low key. I I've gotten low key. I, I did get Richard. I did get my Medicare card. <laughs> oh, good. For you. My birthday this good year. For you. Well, happy birthdays. Congratulations. You. And you get to pull a number one through five. Uh, I'll take one. Okay. And the question is, if you could arm wrestle any historical figure, who would you choose and why? historical figure I would choose Barack Obama wow not historical but well I mean, he's historical he I think historical. he's historical yes, he is historical but because I would love to meet him yes and that yeah, would be a, a wonderful conversation I would love to pick his brain do you know whose brain I want to pick Michelle Obama's mother Oh, because yes. I saw an interview last week with Michelle Obama. Her book is out. I, uh, Michelle, if you hear me out there, I want to have you on this show. I want to interview Michelle Obama because I think Michelle Obama is one of the most fascinating minds on the planet. And to hear her mother talk about her raising her daughter and raising her children was just, she said she didn't raise children. She raised adults. And she instilled in them in a very early age how, well, both of you were mothers, Debbie and Ellen. So, uh, but I, just to go there, I mean, I would, you know, absolutely. So Debbie, who would you arm wrestle and why? Um, well, maybe Ian Dury, because then I'd definitely win. That's very <laughs> mean. He had polio. I'm sorry. That was a very mean joke. Um, but possibly the actor jeremy brett oh so wow. i could then get him in a in some sort of hold <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not, not that he'd be interested but i'd be like you never know you never know oh i do know <laughs> oh, so ellen you get to bring on our next guest so you can pull a number one through three i will take one again okay and guess what i mean this is very unusual in the show we have in addition to debbie our next guest is also from London. So I am so thrilled. We have Sally Hyde Lomax on the show. Again, she was here a few weeks ago for the first time. It feels like a few weeks ago. How long ago was it? Uh, uh, it was actually only three weeks ago, Richard. I was so honored when you asked me back. I thought, gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so how is your writing coming along? I want to ask, first of all. Well, it's getting there. Um, I haven't done as much as I'd hoped to because I've had a busy few weeks one way or another. But, you know, but I have done a bit more and um, i am probably got about 25 minutes now. And I would like to get it to probably 
about an hour and 10, ideally, I think, um, because then it will be um, an hour and 10, an hour and 15. It's um, just, just to fill people in, if you weren't didn't watch me before on, on Richard's show, I'm writing a one woman play called Eileen. And it's about, um, well, it's sort of loosely based on my grandmother. I, t- I said Eileen, didn't I? It's Irene. We're all getting the names wrong today. <laughs> my grandmother died in 1974. And um, that's about where the similarity ends. And I've taken her name. But other than that, it's completely different. And Irene comes back as a ghost, but she doesn't like that name. She calls herself a resident being. So anyway, I I performed a bit of it. I performed a monologue at a sort of scratch night a few weeks ago. And I thought, that's great. I'm going to I'm going to develop that and I'm going to make a one woman show with it. This is great. So where in London or where in relation to London are you? Well, I'm actually in Gloucestershire. So I'm far west. I'm sort of um, about a hundred miles west of London. Okay, um, and where is that relation to where you are, Debbie? You're about sixty miles north, aren't you? Well, I'm about thirty miles north of London, but I'm I'm probably sixty miles, of, I don't know, far from you. <laughs> I'm yeah. from London, but I live now near Cambridge. Yeah, I mean, it's about to get. You know, it's 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 not like I mean, obviously, you travel vast distances in America to get to each other don't you but it's it's considered a vast distance to get from sort of we're nearly in Wales and to get from nearly Wales to the other side right on the other side of England is quite a long journey isn't it it's good yeah three, well, hours. whereabouts are you um well I live um between Gloucester and and the Welsh border so it's a little place called Mitcheldean but I'm basically um 12 miles west of Gloucester, so about 100 miles west of London. Wow. Wow. I can't wait to get there, and we'll have a big party with all of us there. So, uh, Sally, uh, as I I already know, you don't celebrate Thanksgiving either. So who or what are you celebrating today, besides (laughs) your play that we can't wait to see? Well, actually, I'm celebrating the fact that this week, um, you know that borehole we were raising money for during lockdown and everything for our friend from Zimbabwe? We've actually, it's actually gone in. We've actually got a borehole that's been dug and we've raised money. And talking about running earlier with Ellen, um, a few weeks ago, I did a half marathon for the Oxford half marathon, which was um, the slowest half marathon that anyone's ever run. But I did it. I completed it. And I managed to raise a thousand pounds towards the borehole. Wow. Congratulations on that. So if you were to... If you were to arm wrestle any historical figure, who would you want to arm wrestle and why? Well, I think I'm going to go with with um, with, with Debbie. And I, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a truly historic. Well, it's certainly not historical. But I probably want to arm wrestle um, Hugh Laurie. Now, my husband's listening to this, but he fully understands that, you know, that would be fun. <laughs> particularly do you find him most attractive well I loved house did you watch house I watched every episode of house did anyone I, else watch house I didn't watch I liked Jeeves and Worcester yes, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but do you know apparently when he auditioned for house they didn't actually realise initially because he was he wasn't known on your side of the pond. He was only known on ours at that time, and they didn't realise he wasn't American, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? I wish I could. I, know, I never knew until he accepted an award, and I said, "Wait a minute, really? He's not American? No, I did not know." Wow, wow. There's a there's a slight Judy Garland connection as well because he plays Vincent Minnelli in um me and my shadows yes judy davis yes yes absolutely so if you were to go into the olympics what uh would you go for running um i'd probably go for swimming actually not running although i ran the half marathon i'm not a natural runner but i do love swimming but I've never, I've never swam competitively and I've never actually taken it up as a sport, but maybe I should because actually I love swimming. 
I find swimming is divine. Just getting yes. into the water and just yes, and relaxing. Just, absolutely, you get rid of all those pressures, don't you? And you just forget about everything. Absolutely. Well, you get to pick a number one through four. Four. And your random question is, if you could have any celebrity be your best friend, besides the ones that are here now, right now, of course, um, who would you pick? Besides Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jude Law as well. Um, who else? Um, I would, oh, I'd love to get to know Imelda Staunton. Oh, well, I'm coming to London to see her in Adali. I, I, you know, I had tickets to see her when just before COVID and then everything fell apart. So I was thrilled when she said, yeah, she's coming to do it. So uh, I, I, are you an Imelda Staunton fan, Debbie Ellen? Yeah, I think she's very yeah. good. Yes. Thank you. Have you I, watched I, her in The Crown? What do you think? Oh, well, I love her in anything she does. I think she's a phenomenal actress. I am a huge, huge fan of hers. Well, you get to bring on our next guest, one or two. Two. So, Kevin, get your camera on. I'm about to bring you on. And it's very interesting. I have to tell you why. Uh, well, Kevin's been on the show before. Uh, this man is an incredible man, a mover and a shaker in the New York theater scene. And today uh, is also, in addition to some of the holidays that we're going to get to in a few moments, it's National Maze Day because of Maze and Thanksgiving American holiday once again. Uh, but Kevin has a show that he is moving to Broadway. And uh, the show once again is... Shucked. Hi, everyone. Shucked. Hi. Hi. Shucked. Like in corn, get it? Shucked corn. Like in corn. Yeah, uh -huh. there it is. And oh, oh, I have oh. the artwork and everything. So when I'm always I ready for press, that, Richard. You have to be on the show today. Uh, so <laughs> first of all, tell us about the show, Kevin. So Shucked is a, it's a wholly original musical. Um, it's very corny. And that's the last time I promise I won't use those. I promise I won't use those. Hey. I sweared. I, I swore I wouldn't use them. Um, you know, it started its life maybe seven or eight, or maybe even ten years ago. I don't even know. I don't know the backstage um, story of it, but it it. Oh, Debbie, sorry, <laughs> I dropped my camera. <laughs> okay. I got. <laughs> you got excited. I got real. I got really excited. Um, it's um, it's it's you know, it's it's to me. I love when 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 they take musicals of 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 the past and sort of blend them for a future audience. So I would say. It's Brigadoon meets Little Abner with a fully contemporary score and wit to it. Ooh. It's really clever. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're giving away all the storylines of it, but I can just tell you that it's a small town that's surrounded by corn. If that, if maybe that will pique your interest. Ooh, and about what happens, see. what happens, you know, we always have that. You always have the heroine and the, her the hero and the heroine and the, the villain. And, you know, it, all those archetypes are there, but Robert Horn, who wrote the book, book for Tootsie, the musical is writing the book and he is just, I mean, I don't think I've met anyone else who is as hilarious as he is. So. So what, I mean, what was it that pulled you into this story, Kevin, that you said, this is something I definitely have to get on board with. Yeah, it's, that's an interesting question because I, I didn't, I never thought of myself as a producer who would raise money. I always sort of produced my own things and sort of, you know, pulled up by the bootstraps and grabbed some, you know, like put on a cabaret or put, or developed a show here or, or whatnot. And I went to see the reading of this and I was like, I, it was, it was the easiest yes I've ever had. I was like, I can see it. I can see it. You know, I, I mean, I think I would be, I would be, you know, remiss if I didn't say I was looking for a successful show, obviously. I don't, you know, everyone, everyone wants success. Um, and it has that, but it also has so much heart. And I just, I just fell in love with it. I just fell in love with it. Has it been and, cast? The, the leads have been cast. Yeah, the leads have been a cast and announced. And I believe a lot of the ensembles coming, they've done, they've been working on it for a while and they're bringing a lot of people. So um, yeah, very exciting. Very, very exciting for it. Now, so, is it going to open directly in New York or is it going to try out out of town or? 
Yeah, it's it's opening directly. It actually did a small out of town at the Pioneer Theater in Salt Lake oh, City. Okay, I know. But a the beautiful theater. theater. Karen Azenberg is there. It's a great theater. But you know, they didn't really bill it as a pre Broadway. Um, Mike Bosner, who's the lead producer of it, was very smart and didn't want to kind of uh, you know he wanted a <clears throat> he wanted a cocoon. He wanted a, a place where he could sort of you know the old the old days of New Haven or you know are gone. And so you have to sort of you have to hide away someplace and get the work done. And that's exactly what they did. They only ran for two weeks, but you know, with a team like Jack O'Brien directing, Sarah Glebe's choreographing, it's wow. just a stellar team. And they know they see it and they know it. They know what to change. They know what to keep. They know what to you know all that. It's just a really smart team. Wow. Well, congratulations. Well, I'm going to ask this: if you could have any celebrity. Uh, star in this when it you know uh, who would that who would be your ideal and this is in respect to everyone who's already been cast but ask, yes yes but, yes but who would be the ideal person that you would go this is the ideal person to be the star of this show I mean you know I don't even there is one role there's one role, and if you could cast it anyway, I mean, I think Reba McIntyre can do no wrong. So I would love to see Reba. And I know she did any Get Your Gun, so I know she's got chops. So, uh, you know, theater chops. And I, I think I would love to see her. I've that Reba McIntyre did not do The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Oh, yeah. Because... She would have been fantastic. Now, Debbie, have you done any Reba McIntyre? I did Does He Love You. I well, did um, Does He Love You as a half and half face as a duet with myself. <laughs> Great. I did half the mistress, naughty girl uh, look, and then half the good girl wife. And I even went so far as to paint different nail varnish on each hand. Oh so I had like nude nails. Again, I'm telling you all, if you have not seen Debbie's videos, they are, have you seen them, Kevin? I just watched them while I was in backstage. I loved it. It was amazing. Oh, I watched my I watched you. I loved it. It was fantastic. Which one? It was fantastic. I watched you do Judy Garland's I love uh if I love I uh, but I love, I love you. you. I I love you. I love oh, yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I love you, but I didn't want to come out wrong. But I do love you. I, I <laughs> yes, do love I you know. all. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, uh, I think I could go straight for Daddy. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> And my husband oh, knows Richard, it. Richard, we're both married. No, my husband knows it. He knows that I'm obsessed <laughs> with her. He comes home and he goes, are you listening to that damn CD again? You know, it's... <laughs> no, he love. we both are fans. You know, uh, you're on my... Uh, Alexa, I can say her name because I changed her name so that she doesn't go off when I mention her name. Oh, but yeah. on my device, you're... I downloaded all the songs oh. and you pop up uh, in a mix all the time. And oh. it was absolutely incredible. Oh, so Kevin, thanks, if you Richard. could arm wrestle any historical figure, who would you arm wrestle and why? Walt Disney. I just think that would be fascinating oh. conversation. Ooh. And my, yeah. my partner and I, we love Disney. We're, we're sort of Disney adults, but not, not in the, not in the you hate us way, but the sort of like, like, you know, like we, we love to celebrate our adult days at Disney. So I think that would be a fascinating, I'd hold it there for as long as possible to get as much information out as possible. <laughs> no, that is incredible. And if you could compete in the Olympics, which sport would you compete in? Well, I had a lot of time to think about this and I think I'm just going to answer, it's got to be a team sport because I am not sport sporty at all. <laughs> like I'd love to think that I could swim and do like the like the water, you know, the, 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 the synchronized swimming or, or something like that. I was a gymnast when I was a kid, but nothing's left over. Nothing exists. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Well, you've got three, uh, I've got three mystery questions. So you can pick number one through three, and then we're gonna bring our next guest who has been so patiently waiting. Uh, I'll pick number one. And the question for you is, if you had a, well, this is a crazy question because I, you're already a gentle guy. If you had a gentler side, how would you express it? Well, you already do that. Uh, so I'm going to change the question. If you had a harsher side, how would you oh. express it? Oh, dear. Or do you have um, a harsh side? Oh, yeah, of course I do. I mean, I'm a Taurus. So when my when my when the volcano erupts, are you Sally? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, I can be, I'm very calm and I'm very easy. Go I mean, I, I try to be, I mean, it doesn't always help, but, but then when that volcano goes off that it's, it's rough, it's rough. I think if I had a harsher side, I mean, 
I think I would probably need to do it in like some kind of like contact sport, <laughs> like, <laughs> like boxing or, or jujitsu or something like that. Like, I feel like I'd want to take it out physically. So I have to ask Kevin, when's the birthday? My birthday is May 18th. Okay. And Sally? May the 12th. Okay, my husband's is April 29th, so... Okay, uh, okay. He was my daughter, my yeah. youngest Oh, wow. <laughs> Good day. So, <laughs> yes, uh, and I, you know, and we get along great, so that's great. I'm going to bring on our next guest, who's been waiting patiently in the wings yeah. so that we can join her in the conversation. Eileen <laughs> Barnett is here. Hello, oh, Eileen. Eileen. So, Eileen, uh, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. I know that you... How did you celebrate? I had 12 amazing people over. Um, I'm sure you know some of them. Karen Morrow was one. I just spoke with Karen just a couple of days ago. I know. I told her I was going to be on your show. Wow. And Jason Gra. Oh. It, and so whenever, if you guys don't know Jason Gra, you just want to have him at every party. It's like he, you just want to have him uh, uh, in any capacity. I always no, say too so bad funny. this man has no talent. Well, he's not only talented, <laughs> but there's this, and it's not like, you know, how some people are annoyingly on all the time. He's not annoyingly on. He's just the funniest person ever. He's just knows how to pick up a line and carry it. And oh my God, he is just a joy. He is a joy to be with. So um, I don't know if you'd know any of the others. I had another friend, um, Armin Shimmerman and his wife, Kitty Swink. Uh, Armin was on Deep Space Nine for years and years wow. and years. He was little Quark. He was the guy yes. with the big head thing on. Yeah, so it was a very show busy kind of a of a Thanksgiving. I'm exhausted, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, Those are the best. Uh, you know, yeah. We had a years ago. We had Leroy Reams and his uh, 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 then a husband Bob, who unfortunately passed away. Bob, and uh, we had uh, Beth Fowler and her husband Jack for dinner. We sat down at uh, seven o'clock and at one thirty in the morning, Bob said, I'm tired. I've got to go. <laughs> well, you know, they, they showed up at four 30 and, and I think everybody left around 10. It was a, it was a long, wonderful evening. We started decorating my Christmas tree. It was just, it was just lovely and heartwarming. And I love Thanksgiving for you Brits. It's just all my favorite foods. It's oh. just wonderful stuff, you know. It, it's kind of like Christmas. Do well, I mean, do you cook? I do cook. I love to cook. Me and too. Love Me it. too. I love it. And I get a lot of great recipes from the New York Times. Yeah. I, it's, well, it's, that's what I do. I just, I, the whole idea of it. And Debbie and Sally, someday I want you both here for a real traditional Thanksgiving dinner. I would I love it. That no. was it's it, it is. It, it, there, it, it, I mean, it, for me, it's my favorite time of the year because people are not going crazy over the gift giving and everything. It's just people coming together and the conversation and just celebrating each other. So yeah, that it's just sweet. sounds nice. And the smell of a turkey cooking in your house is the best. It's oh, it's the best. Wonderful smell. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you the same questions and then I'm going to give you your mystery question. We're going to talk about some of the holidays that are celebrated on this day. Okay. Uh, but again, because you're such a sweet person, do you have a harsh side? Who, me? Oh, yes. Yes, yes I do have a harsh side. But, you know, I, and I used to be a little bit harsher, but I've mellowed with age. <laughs> I've become more, more patient. But um, we were talking, well, we weren't really talking politics before, but we've had some pretty strange politics going on in the United States. And whenever, whenever that orange pustule, which I will not say, <laughs> I will not say his name, when yes. he comes on, I mean, my husband, first of all, has to leave the room or we have to put the television on mute. And I, it's, it, it arouses such anger in me. And I have... I have like fantasies about physically hurting him. Don't and say that out loud. Please don't say that out loud, please. It's terrible. It's just terrible how I, you know, and as a matter of fact, he was so in my unconscious. I, I had a, a small operation a few years ago. And when I came out of the anesthetic, I was in the operating room. And the first thing I said was, is Donald Trump still president? Well, <laughs> and they said, yes. And I went, oh, well, I'm going to drop another name. Uh, Marge Champion was a dear friend of mine. And oh, yes. I was with her. 
uh, when she was a hundred years old, or I want to say a hundred years young, and we were having lunch. And she grabbed my hand and she said, I have to live long enough to see that man get out of the White House. And, or jail. Uh, yes, or jail. She unfortunately didn't live long enough, but she was so hung up and she was sharp as a tack until the very end. And yeah. she really was so caught up in the po political scene and what was going on. She would say to Richard, are you aware of what's going on? And I said, yes, I'm aware of what's going on. It's just crazy. Yeah. So well, like to the next question, if you could arm wrestle with any historical figure, who would it be and why? Oh my God. You know, I've had a long time to sit here and figure this out and I still don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, um, you know, uh, somebody that I'd really like to get to know, and maybe that's the other question. I don't know. I, I, uh, is the other Meryl, question is if you could have any celebrity be your best friend. Oh, that would be totally pay? Meryl Streep. Yes. And the reason is that I, I, one of the, one of the many awards that she won, she gave some speech and I thought, wouldn't she be just so much fun to have lunch with and just to be girlfriends with? She was so down to earth and so wonderful. But arm wrestling, I think, might just, we would laugh too much. You know, it would be too hilarious. Who would I want to arm wrestle? Well, you know, you were talking about wonderful English actors. I've always had a thing for Jeremy Irons. Oh, incredible actor. Oh, my God. Incredible. I've always had such a thing for him. Got great oh, yes. eyes. I great like those eyes. long, lean guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. my husband is kind of like I fly at him once. Huh? You did what? I gave him a flyer once when I was 22. Me and my friend from school, from secondary school that I've known since she was 11 or since we were 11, I was doing a one woman show about Judy Garland. <laughs> and um, I went to where Rufus Wainwright was doing his Judy Garland thing at the London Palladium. Yeah. And my show about Judy was going to be on the next week at a very small pub theatre called the King's Head in Islington so me and my mate Dawn from school from East London went and flyered for my show outside with Rufus Wainwright going Judy Garland show much better than is <laughs> <laughs> and you um, gave him a flyer oh yeah I that. gave Jeremy Irons a flyer because I was like oh it's Jeremy Irons I was like hello do you want to come and see my show about Judy Garland and he went God bless you and took the the flight. Didn't come. Well, yeah. didn't come. Now he now he, he realizes what he missed out on. Yeah. So Eileen, you get to pick uh, either one or two. Well, two. Okay, and then I'm the next question. I'm going to let everyone respond to. So the question is, what's getting in the way of you getting exactly who you want to be, and or has anything ever gotten in the way? of you being exactly who you want to be. Well, I think we all get in our own way of who we want to be, don't you think? You know, we all do. And I know I have in the past. Um, and I, I, what's interesting, I was just talking about this last night. Uh, I, I had been to an audition and finally at my advanced age, I, <laughs> I've been able to walk into auditions or tape auditions that we do a lot of here now there are not a lot of in-person things but and just feel so good about myself and feel not not so good about myself but just feel like i'm enough you know and it takes a mm -hmm. long time doesn't it to get there and i think it's the most important lesson to learn as a human being as an artist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it 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 really takes a long time and uh, I think I have gotten in my own way so many times, made the wrong decisions or just didn't make a decision. And I'm, I'm really happy now. You know, I just um, started doing my, my cabaret act again. And um, it has been the most joyful, wonderful experience. I used to do it a lot in the LA area. And um and, and now I'm going to branch out a little more. You know, I'm really going to go for it. Hopefully, go for, you know, it. Go for it. London, you know, New York. We'll yeah. Play. Yeah. I would love, I would love that. You know, my friend Amanda McBroom plays New York, uh, plays London all the time. Uh, she and yeah. Rowerman go and, and we're, we're all good friends. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm, I'm Amazing. concentrating that's on wonderful. these days. Yeah. 
So this is the question that no one picked. So I'm going to start with you, Debbie. And the question, if you could switch places with one of your friends for a day, who would it be? And hopefully they're watching. Um, hmm. Oh, God, that's a good one. Um, switch places with one of my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm not sure. Maybe someone, maybe a friend who lives somewhere nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good answer. That's There's very good. There's a lovely good. gentleman who watches me on here who lives in Hawaii. So, you know, yeah. Mark Ianetti Cole. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'm very happy being who I'm being. No, you know? I like that. I, um, uh, what about I, you, Ellen? You know, I have to, I was thinking about that the whole time. I mean, who would I switch places with? And I realized if I did that, I wouldn't be me. You know, and I, I, I my, my accomplishments have, you know, it's taken me, I've been a nurse for some of you who don't know that for, for 45 years. And, um, and now I teach nursing and I, some of my students are on cause I put it in their chat for them to, to come on. And, uh, and my goal was to become a published author, which I did. Which she's and, done the two yeah. incredible books. And which yeah. I highly recommend. And, and now I I I would I would like to see one of my books become a derivative work. That that would, you know, that would be my goal as me. Kevin, Kevin, as, Kevin, Kevin, and, Kevin. And, Kevin. And, uh, <laughs> heard, heard. Now, okay. Like, you know, I uh, for those of you who, who are on Instagram, I don't um there's the AIDS Memorial on Instagram. And I post a lot there from the patients that I've taken care of over the years. Some are in my book, some are not. And um, I, I get so much feedback from, from that, from those posts. And, um, and a lot of people, of course, then read my first book based on my posts. And, uh, you know, I just, Again, I, I have such gratitude and, and Ellen, can I interrupt for just a moment? Yes. Uh, Ellen's book yes. is Nurses on the Inside, uh, and it was about her work during the AIDS crisis in New York. Um, it's a fictionalized account based on real experiences that happen. And it truly, uh, next Thursday is World AIDS Day. Uh, I want to mention that to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an incredible read. Um, it would make an incredible mini series or something. I just watched, uh, I don't know if anyone saw this, but uh, American Horror Story. Um, the, they dealt with the AIDS crisis in a strange way, uh, but uh, it evoked a lot of the memories of what it was like to be in New York at that time. Uh -huh. And I think especially those of us who are old enough to live through it, we know what New York was like at that time. Uh, and I think that people are forgetting, uh, you know, or a lot of people feel that with the new drugs that they can live with it or whatever. Um, take a moment on Thursday to pause and think about those that we've lost. And uh, I was listening to a recording today of uh, Patti LuPone. Uh, it was an older recording of her singing at the same time by Anne Hampton Calloway, which Debbie, Eileen, please, both of you, learn that song. I'm writing it down. Yes, it's an incredible song. Uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant song. Um, might be a good song to put out uh, uh, next Thursday, Debbie. Next Thursday. Yes. Um, and call me and say, Richard told me to do this. Uh, but it's an incredible song. And Patti LuPone sang this. And in her, after she sang it, she talked about all the people that we lost in the prime of their lives with so much more to bring to the oh, planet so and cool. create. It's just incredible. Uh, you know, so many of us in musical theater, we just lost, oh my God, I, I lost my brother. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Yeah, in, in 1993. And uh, and just so many people, it, uh, it never goes away. It never goes away. Yeah. It was the 31st anniversary of Freddie Mercury's passing yesterday. Well, yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There are so, so many. I always say there's been so many unfinished lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, again, I want to highly recommend your book. So uh, we're going to take a moment to get that out there. Uh, what about you, Sally? Is there anyone that you would want to change places with? Well, as it's just for a day, there's a few people, really. Okay. Firstly, um, <laughs> my husband, um, we are polar opposites in many ways. Um, he, But he is much calmer than me and much more sort of sensible about things. I'm such much more sort of, you know, like this emotionally and it would be nice just to experience complete a much more sort of calm outlook on life for a day <laughs> but then I'd want to go back to me the other person I'd like to swap places with is um Edina Menzel because I am not a singer I'm an actor but I'm not a singer and I would love to be able to sing I, I'm, I'm a musical <laughs> performer who can't sing and that's what I would love to do you know well Sally so, I'm going to tell you a little secret that doesn't stop some people <laughs> it's very true. It's all sort of no, it's not mentioning any names. No, 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 of course not. And and the third person I th think I'd like to swap places with Richard for a day is you because I think I'd love to go. You know that would oh be great. I, I don't think so. <laughs> Only for Careful a day. What you wish for, Carol Channing used to say to me, she was a friend. And uh, I will uh, I will bring up my photograph here because I love this photograph. This is me and Carol. Oh, uh, Carol oh. always used to say, "Be careful what you wish for, because you will surely attain it." So, <laughs> so, what about you, Kevin? Who would you switch places with if you could? You know, I have I I don't have any kids, and I would like to swap with one of my friends who has kids, but just for I the day swap because with me. <laughs> Deal. Right? Deal. <laughs> I don't know. I just think. A question: Have you yeah. ever reached out to your friends and said, "Can I take your kids for the day?" I, you know, I've offered. You know, no. I was going to cleverly try to get out of that question, but no. <laughs> so I guess I should make do on that. I mean, I've, 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 I've pet sat. I'll do a little trip over to London. I'll, I'll sit for as long as you need me to. I, I love kids and it just was never, it was never right for me, but uh, I at the timing or anything, but I, I would love that. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's ago. never too late for you though, as a gentleman. <laughs> Who knows That's what true. future may hold? That's true. That's true. Yes, and That's as true. Richard says, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it will come years, years and years ago, I mean, I was in my 20s and I lived in the Bronx and I had a friend and her and her husband wanted to get away. And they had two toddlers. Uh, I mean, when I say toddlers, I think they were five and seven. And so oh. I said, I will take them for the day. So I took them into Manhattan and I was going to take them and just give them a day of doing whatever they wanted to do. And we went into a candy store and the kid, the, the, it was a boy and a girl and the boy disappeared. And I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Oh, and no. I, and God, I, it was just like, a, <laughs> it was a blink of a moment where he was gone. And <laughs> that moment just for me, my life stopped. And then I found him, he had gotten behind the counter and he was inside the candy case, gorging himself. <laughs> he had actually gotten behind the counter. Uh, and they didn't punish us or anything. They, they just thought it was so funny that he did this. But oh. it was petrifying to know that you could, in a moment that a child could disappear. Mm. Uh, has that ever happened to any of the mothers here where your child disappears? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, when my daughter was eight, um, we were on a beach in Cornwall, and it was one of these long beaches that seems to go on forever. And we were quite near the the lifeguard, and we were all together as a family. And then all of a sudden, it was, "Where's Anna? Where's she gone? Where's she gone?" And we oh. couldn't see her. And we literally, it was the most horrible, horrible experience. I mean, there was the sea there. Especially the beach. Yeah, exactly. And I just ran up and down, to asked all the lifeguards to look out for her. And then she just, you know, sauntered up, cool as a cucumber, absolutely fine. She'd sort of gone and built a sandcastle or something a few yards down and come back. Like, she was probably gone for about a minute. It's the panic, that horrible panic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my son, my son uh, went missing in Macy's one time when we were shopping, and uh, he was he was about eight or nine, and I 
I, I actually knew in the back of my head where I would find him, which would be in front of a mirror practicing how to moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did back then. He, he would go back and forth through the mirror so he could watch himself moonwalk those four mirror things. And, and he found one, obviously not where we were, but he found one and there he was. And I said, I said to my, uh, my daughter, my daughter, I said, if we find a mirror, we'll find your brother. And sure enough, <laughs> there, he, you. there he was. Hey, Sherry well, I'd like to officially change my answer then. Now that we've gone through this, I'd like to officially <laughs> remove my answer from service. <laughs> uh, you know, Sherry Callahan, who's watching from Myrtle Beach, my hometown, she says, my son, when he was five, had me paged in the supermarket. He had, uh, he had wandered away and they couldn't find me. Um, uh, Becky O'Brien, who we know is watching from London as well. Yay, and she says, the fact that I have managed to keep five kids from getting lost still amazes me. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, Eileen, would you be interested in changing places with someone for a day? Um, yes. Um, I, I mentioned him before. I would love to be in Jason Gras's head for like just a day, just to feel how that kind of quick wit, wonderful brilliance feels like and you know then go back to my old humdrum self but um but yeah but you talked about kids disappearing I, you know i i never had children and but i've had lots of dogs so kevin you can come and dog sit for me <laughs> done done well i am a dog so I'm in. but i will say this about dogs. jason graw again everybody if you're not familiar with him look him up one of the most brilliant entertainers you know uh, Debbie, I'd love to see you and Jason do an evening together. Oh, that, that would be, that, that that would would be, be incredible because yeah. he, um, at Jerry Herman's memorial, uh, just, I mean, he just came out. And of, of course, everyone's celebrating the music of Jerry Herman, but it was, uh, there was sadness also, but he came mm -hmm. in and had the audience rolling in the aisles just from walking out on stage. He is just one of the funniest, funniest, funniest men on the planet. I just love him Ooh. so much. Uh, so uh, in our remaining moments, I want to ask, because I mentioned in my introduction today, and again, I want to thank you all for being here. This show has been so much fun. It took us a little while to get here, but thank you for being here. Um, today is Black Friday, uh, and today is also, uh, you know, uh, don't buy, uh, it's, uh, the, I want to get the exact wording of this. Uh, it's Buy Nothing Day. Um, so I'm going to start with you, Debbie, once again. Um is Black Friday a thing that you guys have as well? Or is it, it just... recently it's become a thing? Yeah. It never was, but in the last few years it's become a thing. Basically big sales and stuff. But it's now, it's not huge, but it's becoming quite a thing over here. But is it after much. Christmas or is it it because ours is always after Thanksgiving. So yeah. when it is today, same day as yours. Yeah, oh, it's today. It's so it's okay. like the last Friday before December or something, yes. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today. are you a Black Friday person or a buy nothing today person? Well, it was my daughter's birthday last week and I had a children's party for her and they she's just started school and her school have said to me, Oh, the thing is now, when you do a party, you've got to invite the whole class. It's the done thing to invite the whole class or else it's bullying if mm -hmm. you don't invite them. Mm -hmm. So I've just had a party for 35 children <laughs> in a hall that I hired a bouncy castle for and a, got all her birthday presents and everything. So I have no money <laughs> until <laughs> next month. So it's definitely buy nothing. I bought chicken Scott legs. Scott Sander, book her. <laughs> they were one pound ninety nine in Aldi, and that and some milk has been my only purchases today. So <laughs> buy nothing. <laughs> no <Ellen>? choice. <laughs> I'm a huge shop. I love spending money, but um, no, <laughs> buy nothing today. That's me. Oh apart from God. chicken legs for one ninety nine. So yeah. Kevin, once again, I think you may want to rethink your question. <laughs> I, your, uh, I know. I know. Ellen, about sick <laughs> Ellen just messaged that I should have gone over and supervised the party. Yes. That would be my yeah. taste of. <laughs> <laughs> that would have given me enough taste. I'm out. Oh, I'm that's out. Great. It uh, was so, sweet. So Ellen, what about you? I am a buy nothing. I have I have been a buy nothing for decades now. 
everybody, when, when you, I, I always feel like when you buy somebody something, you're buying more your taste rather than them, theirs. And, and I am a fond giver of gift cards. And well, that, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to talk about that in my closing remarks today, but I, I'm with you uh, completely, Ellen. So yeah, yeah, yeah cause yeah. that's, yeah, I, I, I bought nothing today and I, okay. and I'll buy, you know, and then everybody who is supposed to get a gift will get a Amazon gift card so they can buy whatever they like. And that's, that's, that's how I operate. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I think that's, that's wonderful. Uh, Sally. I'm a buy nothing person simply because as a self-employed person, I'm always waiting to be paid. So like, <laughs> never have welcome, money, welcome to show business, Sally. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Kevin. I'm somewhere. I'm, I'm probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, I may, I've made a, a really conscious effort this year to buy small buy from small businesses and by local. So I'm trying that out. We'll see. We'll see if that goes well this year, but I, I don't, I'm not like a, I don't wait, wait in lines. I won't wait. If it's, if that's the, the, the spirit of giving, then I'm out. So, okay. you know, yeah. Good. And Eileen. No, I ne I never do the black Friday thing. Although I looked online, I want to get a new television because my television, I need a smart TV mm. because <laughs> I'm not smart enough to run the TV that I have. So, <laughs> so I sort of started looking on consumer reports, but I'm, I think buy nothing is the best. Sorry. Oh. Nice and raw. Sorry. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to give my closing remarks, and then I'm going to give each of you a chance to give your closing remarks. Uh, oh it can goodness. be about anything that we talked about today that you want to expound upon, anything that we didn't talk about that you wish we had, or just any final message that you want to leave everyone with today. It's your chance. It's your platform. Um, I will uh, turn it over to you, Debbie, when I finish, and then you will pick the next person, and then that person will pick the next person, and so on. And when the last person is standing... All you need to do is say goodbye and the final credits will roll. So you don't worry about how do I get out of here? Um, you don't have to worry about smart TVs or anything. I will end the show. So I want to talk about this because, uh, you know, my grandmother, uh, I grew up in uh, South Carolina. Uh, my father, sit back, everyone, talk about children. My father was one of 10 children. And my mom was the oldest of 16. Yikes. So, Yes. So I, I grew up in the South things. <laughs> so I come from a large family. Uh, gift giving, especially on my father's side of the family became, especially as we got older and older and older, it became a massive, massive, massive thing. Um, they actually built a room onto my grandmother's home that where the Christmas tree was every year and all the gifts were for everybody because the family kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We exchanged names to make it a little bit easier, but my mom would always, you know, buy a gift for each household so that there was something for, you know, it could be something for the dining room or the kitchen or something for each household. And I grew up with that. Um, and so it was this uh, on Black Friday, which didn't exist. There was a name for it. But when Black Friday started to happen, my mom and my grandmother uh, would after Thanksgiving dinner, go to these malls that were open 24 hours at that time. And I'm glad to say that a lot of the stores in New York shut down for Thanksgiving, which is a blessing because they deserve to have the day off as well. So I was happy about that. But they, the shopping and the craziness of everything on Sunday nights, I do a show with Kasira McKee called the Let That Go Show. Uh, and uh, based on her book, Let That Go. And this Sunday night, uh, we're talking about letting go of the stress of the holiday season. And one of the things that people stress out about is getting the perfect gift. Uh, how are they going to finish their gift giving in time or uh, their shopping in time, everything? Um, and I want to go back to something that Ellen said. To me, the greatest gift that you can give anyone at this time of year. And I mentioned this last night at our Thanksgiving dinner and someone at the table got very upset about this. She says, I like gifts, but for me, <laughs> life experiences cannot be replaced. And to me, the greatest gift that you can give anyone is to give them a card and say in the card, pick a date and a time and let's do dinner. 
Let's get together. Mm. Let's go out and mm. let's celebrate each other. Whether it be Dutch or whether you're going to treat them or what, that's something you will negotiate. But just to make a date to get together with someone. I think that, you know, I've made a decision. I talked about it on previous shows and I'm going to mention it again here. Uh, on Thursday, uh, I'm also making a decision to take a sabbatical from Facebook. And I'm taking the, making this decision because I feel that a lot of people are replacing life experiences with post. And I have reached a point where I no longer want to be just another post in someone's feed. Uh, I don't want it to be something that just pops up in someone's feed. They see what's happening and they move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I lost a very dear friend of mine a couple of weeks ago uh, who is the director of my show. And when I called our musical director to ask if he knew that he had passed away, his response was, yes, that happened yesterday. I figured that you would know because you're always on Facebook. Well, number one, I'm not always on Facebook. And number two, something that is life altering, I think warrants a phone call. I think it, uh, you, it, it, and instead of posting a picture of what you've had for dinner or something, and I know that everybody posted their Thanksgiving uh, pictures, uh, but when was the last time that you reached out to a few friends to say, let's get together for dinner, let's go out and see a show, let's do these things, instead of posting about them after the fact? And I think it's important that we get away from just treating each other as posts on social media and we really begin to connect with one another again. That's my wish for the holidays. Uh, and uh, I always end every show by telling everyone to go out and do something nice for somebody else without expecting anything in return. Go to your database, your friends list, whatever it is, and reach out to someone that you haven't spoken to in a while. Reach out with a phone call, especially this time of year. Reach out with a phone call, see how they're doing. Uh, not an email message, not a text message, not a private inbox message, but a phone call. And let that person know how they matter in your life. I think it's important that we all make the effort to do so. I've ended my shows by, you know, for the last year with a comment from my dear friend, Sean Moniker. He always says, we're all in this together, but we're not in the same boat. Uh, but I read another quote and it says, we're all in the same storm but we're in different boats. Some are in yachts, mm -hmm. some are on canoes, some are in rafts, some are on tugboats. Uh, some are pushing that boat up the stream. I don't care what size boat you're on. Make sure if you're gonna be out in a boat that you have a skipper by your side. <laughs> and on that note, I'm gonna leave the screen. And Debbie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I love you and thank you all for being here today. Happy holidays. And Debbie, it's all yours. Uh, okay, hello. <laughs> I was listening to what Richard was saying and not thinking of something um, profound, but it's just been really lovely meeting new people and um, yeah, getting to know people a bit and having a chat and it's been lovely. And thank you very much for ha asking me to be a part of it. Um, as December comes, hope everyone has a really lovely December. And um, I like presents and I like shopping, but I like present wise. I really enjoy getting thoughtful presents for people. I don't think you have to spend very much and you don't have to mm. go to like fancy shops. I get most of my stuff from charity shops, goodwill, you know. Um, but I think when you find something that you just think, oh, so-and-so oh, would love that. I can't tell you the thing I've had in my wardrobe for the past three months because I saw it three months ago and thought, my Uncle Mick's going to love that. I'm keeping it for <laughs> Christmas. It's stuff like that. Um, I think that's really cool. So rather than spending loads of money, just think about the people you know. And if you see a little something that you think, oh, that's funny. or Oh, they'd love that. I think that's nice. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice, Debbie. Do I have to get my... Oh, that was going to sound so wrong. Do I have to get myself off? No. You, have to hand over. Um, <laughs> you have to pick, pick hand the over next one person. Of you have to pick the next person and then you'll... Oh, yeah. Richard will take you off. <laughs> um, well, that way. Ellen? <laughs> oh, okay. Here. So, uh, it, it's been a pleasure meeting everybody and... Uh, I feel like I'm the I'm the 
one person that is not in show business. And the last time I was on Richard Skipper, I was also the one person that was not in show business. So it's always <laughs> wonderful for me to hear about everybody else's experience. But I think I'd like to end today with giving a shout out to some of my students. I am a nursing professor now, and um, I do uh, work in long-term care as an educator. So um, in the next two weeks, my students will be going through their first trimester finals. And so I'm giving a shout out to them that they all do well, they all pass. Um, and so that I will see them next trimester and watch them blossom into wonderful nurses, which I know that they will be. And I know that the world needs nurses. And now mm -hmm. I'm going to hand it over to Kevin. Thank you. Oh, yay. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. I'm thankful today for, for, for Richard, for bringing people together like this. This is, it's so special and such people who have such similarities, even within their differences. It's really amazing to see everyone come in from all the walks of life. I am going to make a plea and this is going to feel like it's a very selfish plea, but it isn't. I mean, it is, it's for all of us, but I think everyone should go out and see live theater, whether that be cabaret whether that be local plays, community theaters, all the way up to Broadway, national tours, anything that you can see, uh, it will help right now to support uh, our industry getting back. It's such an yes. important time. We're rebounding and we're rebounding quickly, but you know, getting everyone back on board and, and being safe and doing it, uh, doing it the right way. So please go see a show, whether it be wherever, there's all kinds of art to support. Um, wishing everybody uh, all, all the... All the folks here who have cabarets, Eileen and Debbie and Sally and anyone who's performing, uh, great shows coming up. And everyone have a happy, happy, happy Christmas and uh, Hanukkah and all the all the holidays in December and a happy new year. Thank you, Richard. And now I'm handing over to Sally. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I would like to thank Richard, too, because it has just been amazing being on the show tonight. I feel it's just been such a great vibe and it's been it's been wonderful. It's almost as if I've been invited into a Thanksgiving party. Because of course <laughs> we don't have Thanksgiving. We can't thank our founding fathers because we'd be thanking the Vikings. So but thank you for making me part of this. And I just so enjoyed it. Happy Happy Christmas that's coming up. Happy everything that's coming up. And um, enjoy life. Enjoy each other. Love your family and just have a great time. Thank you. And I'm handing over to Eileen. <laughs> oh, my gosh, a mess. Well, it was a lovely afternoon and it was wonderful meeting new people. Um, uh, I, I wish Kevin all the best with, um, with his new show, Shucked. I wish a Debbie a continued success in all of us, um, not just at Christmas time, but but uh, but all the time. I want us all to um, reach out to people. What Richard said was so beautiful, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Be well, be safe, be healthy, and uh, I will sign off. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>